Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception at the Homedon Fertility Center. So today we talk about a subject which is widely practiced in many parts of the world of splitting the dose of gonadotrophins and seeing whether that makes a difference. So what does ha happens? So in some countries where a poor responder is being treated, the gonadotrophin dose is split into two doses, a morning dose and an evening dose. So this study, a, a, a very much an observational study, which was published recently, looked at do poor responders, patients, undergoing IVF benefit from splitting the dose or increasing the daily dose of gonadotrophins. So let's have a look at this, and this was done in, published in Gynecology and Endocrinology uh, this year. And there are many strategies that are there for poor responders. And if you, you all the lectures which I give, there are close to 22 or strategies or protocols that are used for poor responders. And one strategy is to increase the daily dose, and we go from 400, 450 to 600, and give huge doses of gonadotrophins. And there have been studies which have shown that a dose increase from 450 to 600 showed no improvement. In the past, again, they split up the dose of 300 units and one study, but that was in 1988, showed a slightly higher pregnancy rate. And then a randomized controlled trials were done, and again, that found no change. So in this case, it was slightly different. So again, let's look at it. It's an observational study, and notes were reviewed. Again, all the cases by Bolonga criteria were looked at a poor ovarian reserve and they had all the starting dose of 450 and they had not got pregnant and they received a subsequent cycle in which they were given 300 of gonadotrophins twice a day. So let's have a look at the results and when you look at the results again remember that the numbers are small and what, what do we look at the results? We see that when you split up the dose in this study, the peak estradiol level was much higher. Plus, the number of follicles were more and the mean number of oocytes retrieved was slightly higher. And then you say, yes, that's probably a difference and that's a significant difference that is seen. But the live birth rate was only one, so you then look at it from 5%. But looking at it, live birth rate isn't hugely different in terms of the numbers. So what does the splitting of the dose in this study show? This study showed that by splitting the dose you could, it showed a higher peak estradiol level, more follicles more than 15 millimeter, higher number of oocytes and the differences may be more prominent in women less than 42 years of age. Now the same authors had done a study which showed that if you had used 450 the pregnancy rate in the spore was more than 7.5 percent and there was no benefit of giving them an increased dose of 600. But a live birth rate here seemed to be about 5 percent but that's again only one case that, is hap uh, that happens in, the, in this study. So that's a very small percentage of patients would get pregnant. Now let's presume and again I don't think this this has answered the question whether splitting dose would be helpful because there are other studies which have shown no difference when you split the dose but let's presume that it is probably working and how would it work one is when you look at the FSH polymor polymorphism and that's a new topic and that's a topic that has uh, in fact, uh, uh, it's very difficult to prove or disprove and a lot of research is going into it. And there is an F S in polymorphism, you also see F FSH receptor problems. And so what some people believe, again the proof is very limited, is to increase the dose of gonadotrophins. And if you increase the dose of gonadotrophins, you may overcome this receptor or polymorphism problem. But that's again a concept and it's not been proved and, I, and, and that's what a lot of people believe. But what we also know that in women with poor ovarian reserve, there is a reduced androgen secretory capacity of theca cells. It has a lower LH functional receptors and the, there's an inability to maintain estrogen level production by granular cells. 
and that's when you give a single dose. And so when you give a double dose, you seem to let the granular cells keep a higher amount of estradiol. And that's probably the concept which this was working on. So in conclusion, we would say, well, should you split up the dose? In this study, yes, but we don't know the answers and we don't, in this group of poor responders, I don't think we know, know the real answer of what would really work. It's a retrospective study, but it's worth, sometimes worth trying, especially in, in those women who don't want egg donation. And so where do I stand here? And I don't give high doses generally. And I, I always say, look at the size of your antral follicles and they will tell you a story. And look at how many are there and when they are there. And that is what I call as chasing the antral follicle. And when, I, when you uh, we teach in our, our courses, this is something which I want you to understand is that the antral follicles change and how to find that out. And that is another discussion altogether. But what this paper is does showing is, at least in this study, is it gives you a more positive rise of FSH. And maybe in those small number of cases, this splitting the dose may be beneficial. Thank you very much. If you do like this talk, like it and share the page. And so that I think we can just keep spreading the knowledge and updates. And also it gets you all thinking. And I'm not saying what, what, what all the papers are right. And I think we look at it for, you know, with a... Uh, a magnifying glass and all of us come with our own opinions and one of the things it's important to realize is many of these researchers have spent a lot of time and effort in trying to get a good result going. Thank you very much.